Gentlemen, I'm Sporta here. This is Nicole. <laughs> the jar. Sporta here. Uh, today we have uh, the Memorial Day Parade here live from Lawrence. So let us begin today's parade. And the police and the, the Lawrence Township police officers are starting us off today, as they do every year. Followed by the Lawrence Township police officers is a uh, local members. Of Lawrence. Next up is the United States Naval Sea Cadets. John e. Dempster, JR Division. They are very well trained, as you can see. Their legs are all insane. They are all part of the march, you know. I'm glad. Um, very talented young Very lady. talented, yeah. All right, next up, we have the mayor of Lawrence. Uh, the mayor of Lawrence. Again, he was the newly elected uh, mayor, or followed by him. He was uh he, he was elected this year. After them we have we have uh we have a car and a BMW members. Long Township. Long Township. Veterans. Veterans, yes. We met a couple veterans. Um most of the veterans here today, Nicole, are uh, World War II veterans. Not you're not you that most of the time you're gonna see that. Yeah. And after that we have the another veteran car, Coleman. And in the car is World War II veteran. He was uh he fought in uh, the World War II in China and Japan. Followed by that we have another veteran truck. And you know Nicole, I like I like to see, you know, uh, you know the veterans, you know, I love how they're so in spirit, you know, they're mm -hmm. all American, you know, all American. And it's such an honor that they, uh, you know, they, they, they come here to Lawrence after serving in a war. And there we have, uh, we have Eric, excuse me, Eric, Quido, Quido, Eric Boney, who was in the war, World War II. By the way, World War II was called Recon Recovery of Europe, Liberated France and Belgium. And, uh, Next German. up is the American Legion. American Legion. <laughs> Post number 414. Right. All right. Okay. Followed by them are followed followed after the American Legion is some more veterans. <laughs> And I love how how in spirit they are. <laughs> yeah, let's go. After that, we have more veterans. Again, a lot of veterans here today. It's it's Memorial Day. You know, you have we have to honor our vets and what they've done for our country. Veteran. Followed by the veterans <laughs> are. Well, you know what? If there's one thing I have to say about these veterans is that it's, it is a very um, honorable thing for them to honorable, come. Yeah. You know, we're all joining our families here. Yeah, all joining nice our families. See. It's good to be with family today. Also, uh, followed by the veterans, we have army, the army as well as here. Some members of them. Of here, so you know you get you get a bit of everything uh, when it's Memorial Day. You get you get some past legends, and then you get some of the current, you know, current future stars in the army. And as you can see, most of these cars are very old-fashioned. You can see that the ropes are hanging um, hanging from them. Which um, they were they, most of the time they were served uh, in the wars. Very vintage. And very vintage, yes. Nice tumbler that is. Ah, and if you can hear, you can see some army people inside this green 
they uh, serve in the army and there we have the 44th M I I IBCT. They serve the bridge cage HQ. And the lead very strong. Very strong and powerful they are. And I again and they take a huge risk. They fight every day for all of us and all of America and we honor and respect them. Followed by th them is Paula is Paula Solomon Clerk, who is the Mercer County Clerk. So respect to her coming here today. Hello. And followed by them is the mer uh, the marching band for Lawrence. So, very talented group, as you can they're, see. They're a lot similar to our uh, our Red Scare here in Lawrence. Uh, again, more members and more advanced a little bit. But they've been doing this for a while. Followed by them is the Township. Followed by them is the Township of Lawrence Office of Eight on 18. So a lot of uh, local community members. It's a Lawrence Senior Citizen Center. Lawrence Club, Senior Club. It's so a Lawrence Senior Club, number two. Leave so last year was number one. Followed by them is the town, again, follow more members of Senior of Aging. Oh, sorry, Township of Office of Aging, on Aging. So Here comes the Lawrence Township PBA, 119. 119. And followed by the PBA is Colonel Han, uh, who is actually, um, who is Bill Agris, but today he is B Colonel Han. <laughs> he is with the Lawrence Historical Society. Uh, Lawrence Historical Society. Uh, he's been doing this for quite a while. He also plays uh, George Washington. And by the way, Nicole, uh, Lawrence, it was back then, and during war the war, Lawrence was called Maidenhead. It was changed in 1816 to Lawrence. So that's an interesting fact I never knew. Followed by uh, the Lawrence History Society, we have the band of Washington Memorial. They were formed and they are playing bagpipes. Uh, lovely music they have. They are from, they were formed decades ago. One of the oldest bands in Pennsylvania. And, they, and the band is passed down through families and generations. So you can see some, you can see some old and young and young people in this band. So that's very nice. Next up is the Lawrence of uh, uh, the Lawrence Council, Knights of Columbus. They are a Catholic company that um, upholds Catholic values and supports Catholic causes. After them is Mercer Area 11, which is some members of. Uh, part of the, you know, some members of Lawrence High, a lot of a lot of local community members here for uh, Area 11. Also, that we have the Lawrence. <laughs> also, we get the Lawrence Lacrosse team, Lacrosse Club, for, uh, with a lot ranging of, from ages five to twelve. Very talented young group. Talented young group. Uh, Both no, ladies and young boys. And most likely, we'll continue on. Uh, further, and we'll, we'll see him hopefully next uh, in, in, the, in the coming years. Next is the Junior Cardinals, um, with Lawrence Middle School's cheerleaders and football players and going were, to playoffs next year. Going to playoffs year. next year. The team is really well. Uh, they played really well this season, and we hope they Lawrence make the Little playoffs. League. And there's the Lawrence Little League. Lawrence Basically. Little League is both boys and girls. Very talented young group. Um, They've been playing and they're um, getting ready to go to playoffs soon. I believe this is ranging from ages five to twelve as well. I like how you know a lot of kids these days can get involved in society. It's it's really well done. Very uh, much, and I like that it's both um, ladies and again ladies and girls. That's yeah. something 
Also, ladies and really boys. Nice, really nice. All right. Mhm. Mm so we have some members, local community members. Uh, Next Lauren. up is the Boy Scouts team. That is Troop Twenty Seven. Um, they commit to community service monthly, and they're going to Mexico this um, this year. So nice of them, mm -hmm. troops. And next we have it's the younger Boy Scouts. Younger, younger Boy Scouts again. Oh, and Girl Scouts. And Girl Scouts. So again, more co-ed here, which is nice to see. Also, uh, it appears they were passing out candy, so it's nice that the younger kids are involved. And we have a little boy right here passing out flyers. Small young. Members here. It's always great to um, always great to see have uh, community service. It's good that they start at a young age. Start at a young age, and you it lead to like a nice uh, professional career. Mm -hmm. After that, we have Eldridge, the Eldridge Park Elementary School. So nice again to see some of our young members. Also, we have Latinos, Latinos. Unidos. Mm -hmm. Some of the our foreign foreign members of Lawrence. Showing so much spirit right now. A lot of spirit. Well, a lot of spirit again. A lot. Most of these guys have a lot of America and Lawrence pride. And followed by them, we have this uh, Eldridge Park. We have Slackwood. So another another elementary school participating in the event today. So a lot of people coming in. Today. That's really nice to see. How many members? How many members you know are involved today? All right, have a good one. Okay. You know, I think it's very nice that the um, parents do assist with the um, group. Oh, really? It really does show it really um, gives, unity. Also shows a good influence mm -hmm. on these young children for the future. And also we have Ryder University here as well. Followed by Ryder, we have St. Anne, Anne, Anne School, Lawrenceville, New Jersey. Nice spirit. They have today. Mm -hmm. Oh, more Boy Scouts. More Boy Scouts. You're gonna see a lot of oh, them. Oh, so today. this is Troop 27. There is Troop 27 right there. Prepared for life. Boy Scouts of America. And we have a Troop Master with a dog and a Batman mask. <laughs> so that's that's really nice to see. So we have. The uh, Girl also, Scouts! Lawrence and, U and Ewing Trenton Scouts. They so, are the G Go Getters, I Innovators, R Risk Takers, and L Leaders. A lot of numbers they are. See all and communities. You can hear, you can also see some of the Notre Dame uh, people. So even though they are pri uh, private schoolers, they are they do also pay con uh, tribute to society. Yep. So that's nice. After that, this is Notre Dame High School. Notre Dame. And, and which is that, also part of Lawrence. You can hear that now coming is Lawrence Red Scare, part of LHS High. And as you can see, they have they're gonna de they're debuting their new uniforms and they will be participating next year in halftime shows for football next year. This is the first time they are wearing their uniforms since 1899. So, I mean 1989. So, it's been quite a while since they've been using these new uniforms and I, and I can't tell you how excited I am to see them next year uh, participating at, in the halftime shows. So there's Lawrence Redscare again. Lawrence Redscare. And this is the first time that Color Guard is joining with them. So that's also really special. Color Guard as well. You get, you get a lot of members. With them. Very talented young group. Very talented. I love the way how they participate in this event. And how much a lot of training these guys have. Mm -hmm. After them we have... Uh, this is the Lawrence um, Color Guard. Color Guard. So, um, flags. Nice flags they have. Um, they all participate really well. They show also they have lots of spirit, you know, lots of spirit. And uh, these guys have lots of spirit and they have so much talent to show. And I'm excited to see them next year again. Followed by them, we have the Slackwood Presbyterian Church. Mm -hmm. And 
with them as a clown. <laughs> that nice. I believe this church is very involved with the community. Very involved. Again, with a lot of groups. Yeah. You got multiple groups like that, you know. You're also involved in like the county and towns, and the town as well. So, that's nice. After that, we have the A. Kutesaka contract. The A trailer. And they are loud and ready for today. Founded in 91. <laughs> So Tom Irvin is um, Tom Irvin is here. Is in part ninety one. Part ninety one, and we have also and number thirty one, like, uh, the, the recent winner, the recent champ. <laughs> and these cars are really small today. Really hilarious how you can get him in. And there we have Tom Irvin, number ninety one. <laughs> Tom Irvin. Very talented, as you can Thomas see. Thomas Irvin, very talented with LTBS TV. Mm -hmm. Followed by. Uh, the Lawrence contractors we have uh, we have the fire department fire marshal here today well so the fire department also getting involved today you're, Nicole you're basically going to get a, a bit of everybody involved today and that's what I love to see especially in, on a day like this yeah fire marshal also Lawrence Road I believe this is the Lawrence fire department Fire Very involved. Um, <laughs> I believe these people um, host many events within the community. Yep. Pleasure to see them all here today. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Lawrence Road Fire Co. This is Station 22. Station 22. And we have the Lawrence Township Fire Truck. Huge and ready to be here today. We've got about a lot of them actually, so they're here and ready to make some noise. Station 22. The fire department is very involved. Um, not only do they um, prevent fires, but they also. Um, They also prevent um, child. Um, let me just hold it. Alright. Fire District 22. And also part of Slackwood. So founded in uh, Slackwood. They inspect all commercial buildings and multiple dwellings for enforcement and compliance. They review site plans for new construction to comply with the Uniform Construction Code. They prov um, provide um, fire prevention programs to the public. And they're always here um, for the child passenger safety instruction. Slackwood 21. Tower. This is Slackwood. Slackwood again. Uh, I, I appears like I saw a lot of Slackwood today. So again, Slackwood probably, probably the most part of Lawrence that is involved today. Yep, so. Tower 21. Um, the Slackwood Fire um, Company was the first of Lawrence Township's three volunteer um, fire companies to organize. On November 1st, 1906, 27 citizens of the Slackwood area met for the first time. They would meet every Thursday at Slackwood Chapel and due to, um, due to um, sets at 10 cents a month. So on March 16, 1907, the new company was officially incorporated. George Ford was elected the first um, chief in September September that same year. All right. So there we have uh, number 23, Bruce. Again, more, more a lot of fire department. Very old-fashioned. Um, and they Bruce have 23. Old-fashioned. Oh, a lot of you, you know you're gonna again you're gonna get a lot of a lot of things today. You're gonna get old-fashioned. You're gonna get some new things as well. So you're gonna get a bit of both. You know, you gotta show people the past and the future. As you can see, this is um, Utility 23. This is District 3. District 3. And also you Rescue Number 23, Orange District, uh, Russian Township District. 
and rescue 23. Now, I'm always honored to see um, firemen because they're always there to help you. They have very nice spirit. And they are, your um, well, veterans are our national heroes. The fire department are, is our local heroes. So it's nice to see some, again, national and local heroes here today. Emergency medical services as well as here. Always good to see them. Followed by uh, the Lawrence Emergency Services. We have um, Arrow. We have the Department this of Public Works here. Oh, very decorative. A lot of decorative and um with a lot of, I mean, a lot of these cars today, they are, de they are decorated, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they decorated a lot of their cars today, but like, it's, it's in like American, American style, like they changed it up just for, just to honor in uh, America today, which is, well, nice. And I believe that is the end of the parade. We have the end of the parade here as we have the Ford police car. And that takes us to the end of the parade here in Lawrence High. Um, that uh, does it for this year um again it was a pleasure seeing everybody here today they will however continue on in lawrence uh throughout the day but as for today in lawrence high they are done for the day and that concludes it and i'm again it was an it was a pleasure seeing them today it was an honor it was definitely an honor seeing everybody here participating in this a local event and so that takes us to the end as i am I am Sabor Tahir again. Sabor Tahir. This is Nicole Najar. And uh, we're signing out for the day. And it's been a pleasure. And this is also uh, our last time this year. I want to thank uh, Baxiar. Uh, B. Baxiar B. And Zoe. Zoe Singleton today for working cameraman and looks as it also uh, and it was also a pleasure working with Nicole today uh, good to have another announcer in the booth with me today and so thank you for watching ladies and gentlemen LTBS TV again sports out here Nicole Jar. and we're signing out today and it's been a pleasure this year I'm excited for next year and thank you for watching LTBS TV and we are signing out <laughs>
morning, everybody. My name is Colonel United States Army Retired Bob Watson, Commander of the 112th Field Artillery Association. Thank you for coming, and I will be your master of ceremonies today. Thank you. Chair Bobbitt, Township Council members, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lawrence Township Memorial Day Observance 2018. Poor the nation that has no heroes. Poor that nation that does, but doesn't remember. Memorial Day is a day to remember the men and women who served in the armed forces of the United States of America and who are no longer with us. Some have made the ultimate sacrifice while defending this great country. Others have worn the uniform and are no longer with us. This is what Memorial Day is all about, taking time to remember and honor our fallen comrades. I ask everyone to please stand for the invocation given by Leroy Ames, Chaplain American Legion Post 414, and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance by the Lawrence Township Scouts and the National Anthem played by the Princeton University Marching Band. It's a pleasure to be in the land of the living, correct? Yes. Pat yourself on the back and give yourself a hand. We woke up this morning. Oh, good morning. Invocation, Almighty and loving God, we bring you hopeful hearts into this place to help each other and our comrades in need. Direct us our effort to lift up this community to our God's kingdom on earth and spirit of any person different. May the same dedication to our country and the war we have direct to lift the spirit around of our land. Under God. Everybody say, under God. Under God. And undivided by any enemies. Amen.
For this day is to remember those who pay the ultimate sacrifice for the values of our nation. Earlier this week, I had the privilege of seeing my father-in-law, Major Raymond Smith, lay to rest at Arlington National Cemetery. I'm not going to recite all the things he did while serving the Army, because that wasn't like Ray. Instead, I'll tell you about two things that I'll always remember about the day. First was one of the things Ray's friend said before the ceremony, was his dedication to service. Even after retiring, he, he volunteered. I think one of his friends said he was on his fourth retirement, just serving people. Um, and that service is reflected at the party, it, not just being about friends and family, but it included those who went and served with him in his ROTC class, who served with him in Vietnam, and who worked with him afterwards. The second memory is just the feeling of being in a field full of those who served in the defense of our nation and an embodiment of our nation's motto, Be Pluribus Unum, out of many, one. I'll leave you with a famous yet short speech that speaks to my feelings today in a way that I doubt I can ever match. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation, or any nation, so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives to that nation might live. It's altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it, far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note or long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living rather than rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they have fought here and thus far no, so nobly advanced. It is rather it is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us. That from those those honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall now perish from the earth. God bless you all. Take care. Thank you, Mayor. Lawrence Township Patriotic Committee started a great tradition several years ago by asking Lawrence Township Middle School students to participate in an essay writing contest with the topic, What Does Memorial Day Mean to Me? We are very pleased and proud to announce the winners of this year's essay contest. I ask them to please step forward. Third place, Elizabeth Octet. Elizabeth. Second place, Nishka Desai. And the first place winner was Eva Stoweth. We'll now have Eva share with us her essay. Eva.
of these essay winners will receive a monetary award from the American Legion Post 414 for their work. Presenting Eva with her award is Commander Stephen Arnold, Commander Post 414. As this day is the day to honor our fallen who have died in service to our nation, it is also a day when veterans can take special pride in the branch of the service for which they served. To help us all experience that service pride is the Lawrence Community Band under the direction of Ronald D'Agliano, who will perform the Armed Forces Salute. We ask that all veterans present stand proudly when you hear your service anthem played.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege and honor to welcome our Grand Marshal and guest speaker, Commander of the United States Navy Retired, Andrew Tenard. Commander Tenard served in the United States Navy and Navy Reserve from 1989 to 2012. He is a surface warfare officer and was stationed on the USS Engage, USS Ranger, USS Falcon, and the SS Cape Johnson over the course of his career. Commander Tenard was also assigned to shore commands with the United States Forces Command, European Command in Stuttgart, Germany, and Fleet Forces Command, Norfolk, Virginia. Throughout his career, he participated in operations Desert Storm in Iraq, Operations Restore Hope in Somalia, and Operation Iraqi Freedom, where he was in command of an Ordnance replenishment, replenishment Unit. One of Commander Sonar's last assignments was to participate in the earthquake relief operations in Haiti. His awards include the Meritori Meritorious Service Medal, Joint Service Commendation Medal, three Navy Commendation Medals, Joint Service Achievement Medal, and four Navy Achievement Medals. Commander Tenard is now the Assistant Commissioner of Operations at the New Jersey Department of Transportation. He and his wife of 26 years, Janie, reside in Lawrenceville, where she is a teacher at Lawrence Elementary School. It's my honor to introduce Commander Tenard. Thank you, Colonel Watson. <coughs> Mayor, council members, friends, neighbors, good morning. good morning. The United States does not have any natural enemies. I heard this recently on National Public Radio during an interview with James Clapper, the former director of national intelligence. He was explaining some of the nuances of conducting negotiations with potential adversaries. The United States does not have any natural enemies. Interesting. Is it true? What does it mean? This year, 2018, is part of the 50-year anniversary of the Vietnam War. In March of this year, the USS Carl Vinson, a nuclear aircraft carrier and its battle group, made a historic port visit to Vietnam. The Carl Vinson anchored off Da Nang just 53 years after 3,500 Marines transferred ashore from the same anchorage as the first sizable U.S. fighting force in Vietnam. This year, U.S. sailors from that battle group visited hospitals and schools. They ate and drank alongside the Vietnamese people. The Navy band played a concert and closer relations were built. Although Vietnam is not considered an ally today, it is not an enemy or even an adversary. Why? Well, that, in essence, is what we are honoring today, Memorial Day. Some 50 years ago, over 58,000 Americans died in the Vietnam War. Many more veterans returned damaged physically and emotionally. Almost all of them returned home to a country torn and confused by that conflict. I know some of those veterans are here, are right here amongst us today, and I would like to take this moment, 50 years later, to acknowledge the Americans who did not come home and also honor those who are here. So the Vietnam veterans, if you could stand and be recognized. Thank you. The port visit by the USS Carl Vinson in March and peace we enjoy with Vietnam is a real testament of the sacrifice and success our Vietnam veterans paid just five decades ago. They started the peace process and we are at peace with that country today because of them. The United States does not have any natural enemies. Korea. The Forgotten War. Almost 37,000 Americans died in the Korean War in the 1950s. For the last 70 years, 
right up to today, millions of American GIs stood eyeball to eyeball against North Korean soldiers and never blinked. Earlier this month, North and South Korea agreed to officially end their war and begin to normalize relations. Sometime in the relative near future, our president may just meet with the leader of North Korea to broker a final peace. We have to understand and appreciate the path to this point of possible peace started with the sacrifice of those 37,000 service members who died in Korea. This weekend, Memorial Day weekend, we remember their sacrifice and also give them credit for starting the peace process. And over the next few weeks and months, whatever may happen, remember the process started with the Korean War veterans. The United States does not have any natural enemies. We used to be enemies with Germany, Japan, and Italy. During World War II, over 400,000 Americans died around the globe in fighting those countries. Just two generations later, the world is completely different. Today, I drove here in my Japanese-made truck. My family lived in Germany for two years, and my younger daughter was actually born there. And just about every one of my close friends has gone to vacation on the Amalfi Coast or sent their children to study abroad in Italy. Generations of Americans have been stationed and lived in those countries for over half a century, becoming part of their national fabric. But we need to remember those 400,000 Americans, plus tens of thousands more who were injured, were the ones who truly paid the price for the peace we enjoy right now. The United States does not have natural enemies. Last weekend, more history. We all watched it on television. An American girl married a British prince. Think about that. A member of the royal family from the very country we fought our independence against, right here in this neighborhood, married an American commoner. It's actually astonishing. I wonder what the five Revolutionary War veterans who are buried at the Lawrence Presbyterian Church would think about that. I think they'd be happy. The Cold War, World War I, Spanish-American War, the Civil War. We are reluctant to go to war, but we're not afraid. There's a difference. But what is most important is that when the fighting is done, we work just as hard to build real peace. We don't perhaps, we don't, perhaps we can't stay enemies with others. That is what it means when we say the United States does not have natural enemies. America and Americans are willing to pay a very high price, some the highest price, to make things better, to make relationships better, to give people a chance to live more freely. As imperfect as it may seem, it is who we are and what we stand for. It may take a while, but our track record's pretty good. But this we should always remember. It is only good because of the selfless sacrifices millions of Americans have endured throughout our history to make things better. Fast forward to today. It may be hard to imagine as we watch the news and read the newspapers, but I predict the conflicts we are currently enduring today and the conflicts that I have been involved in over the last 25 years will also yield a lasting peace with good relationships someday. The service members who are on the ground, in the air, and at sea, all over the world, right now, doing the real work of peace, know someday their sacrifice will pay off. So yes, I think it's true. The United States does not have natural enemies. That is not what we're about. When we have to, our country will stand up for what is right, but we do not hold grudges. We have changed the world in this respect, and it has changed for the better. We should be proud of that. But let us never forget that our fallen comrades have made that happen. 
And this weekend, we remember and thank them for that legacy. We do not have natural enemies. Thank you, and happy Memorial Day. Thank you, Commander Tamar. Sometimes the concept of Memorial Day can seem abstract. Many of us don't know or never knew a fallen or missing veteran. However, the loss of a service member is not all abstract for a mother who lost a son or daughter. We will take a moment to honor those special ladies who we call Gold Star Mothers. I asked Mary Ann Arnold from American Legion Post 414 to lead us in the Gold Star Mother's Prayer. Mary Ann. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us and on our country. We ask that you bless and to comfort our Gold Star parents who are here today. Give them the strength to do their daily tasks and the courage to meet the problems of life. Grant that their example may be our inspiration. Amen. Thank you, Miriam. Each year at this time in our program, our veterans organizations pay special tribute to their fallen members. I would like to introduce Stephen Arnold, commander of American Legion Post 414, who will read off the names of the deceased members. Stephen. In the past year, we've lost the following comrades. Philip Trotto, Sebastiano Stia, Paul McNelly, Walter B. Nixon, William Claiborne, Gwinnett Keyes, and Frank E. Smith. A moment of silence, please, in remembrance of our lunch meals. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. And representing the 112th Field Artillery Association is me. Our members were Ernie Anderson, Colonel United States Army Retired Frank Carlone, Benjamin Dudzik, Daniel George, Command Sergeant Major United States Army Retired John Humphreys Jr., Robert Kisnerick, Colonel United States Army Retired Lynn Thorny, Master Sergeant United States Army Retired Jerry Travis, Morgan Van Heis, and Brigadier General, United States Air Force, retired James Young. This now brings us to the solemn part of our ceremony. Commander Tenard, Mayor Baba, and the commanders of American Legion Post 414 and the 112th Field Artillery Association will now lay a wreath at the monument honoring our fallen heroes. An artillery salute will be provided by the 112th Field Artillery Association. The gunners today are George Bukima and Joe Casal. The United States Navy Sea Cadets will lower and raise the flags, and the rifle firing detail is from the 44th Infantry Brigade Combat Team. Please remain standing for the taps played by Joe Saccone and Sharif Sazad for our fallen comrades.
Sorry.